Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, I'll be talking about Google's new Gemini CLI. So this is an all new uh, CLI which is introduced by Google. So we're going to see how this Google Gemini CLI is going to be uh, maybe a game changer or not a game changer or how it is really competing with the uh, cloud CLI or Amazon's developer queue or Warp Terminal or there are a bunch of terminals these days which are getting smarter and smarter each and every day. And this Google Gemini is going to be using the Gemini model as it names. So we're going to see how this uh, Google CLI is going to be changing the way that we are going to be interacting with the uh, CLI. I have not even installed even a single bit and I haven't even tried this uh, CLI so far. And I'm going to be trying along with you this time and we'll see how we can actually make use of it. So I'm going to go to this particular page. See, this is the uh, GitHub page for the Google Gemini CLI. Uh, so I'm in here and you can see that already there are 29,600 uh, stars, which is amazing because it's Google. The prerequisite to uh, work with the Google Gemini CLI is uh, the Node.js version. I already have that, so I'm not going to worry about it. But I need to install the Google Gemini CLI using an npx command. Uh, which can execute this or I can also uh, do with the npm command if I wanted to. Uh, let's go with the npx command because that is straightforward and I'm going to open a terminal which I always use which is this one uh, and I'm going to run this. We'll see how the installation is going to be. Let's uh, see. Okay, so it says I uh, need to install the following package. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. So let's see what else it's really going to ask. Uh, probably if it is going to be asking something related to the uh, the details like how I need to log in, then I probably need to do that in a separate screen. But uh, looks like there is nothing that I really need to enter. It's already done. There we go. That's very straightforward to be honest. And it says Gemini, uh, this is uh, going to be like, be specific to the best suite. Create Gemini.md file to customize your interaction with the Gemini. So you can also create a rules uh, like how you do with the cursor uh, or any other smart uh, systems these days and then you can also hit slash help for the help and it says you can also choose the theme uh, so yeah i think uh, the regular seems pretty good so i'm going to choose that and this is going to say is it the user setting that i want to apply or uh, do i need to apply for the entire workspace let's see how i do that oh just hit the tab to choose that uh, so i'm going to choose the user settings which is fine and there we go and press enter to select which is cool so what else i need to do in here so you can also see that once we choose the theme uh, you can just use it uh, directly but when prompted uh, sign in with your personal google account this will help you grant 60 model requests per minute and thousand model requests per day uh, using gemini so it's at the moment, it's quite free, so we can almost do a lot of things right now, like 60 model requests per minute and 1,000 model requests per day, which is, I think this is more than enough for now. So I'm just going to leave that guy as it is. So what else I need to do? There we go. We have everything. I just pressed the escape button, so I just went out of that. And it says, uh, log in with Google, Gemini API key, or Vertex uh, uh, AI. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with my Google, Google account, and there we go. So it is signed in right now. And that's it, I guess. We're done. So we have signed in over here. And now we can start doing things. So just let's say I'm going to do a slash help. <clears throat> you can see that just brings a lot of help here uh, like that. And you can see it shows us some information like add context by using add and then specify the file name that we wanted to add context to. Uh, and then shell mode. And there is a clear... Uh, which is going to clear the screen and the conversation history. Uh, it's going to show the docs uh, in the CLI documentation in your browser. And we also have got a memory in here, which is going to store the memory of our uh, interaction. And look at that, they also have got the MCP, which is going to be used for uh, connecting with the MCP server. This is pretty much like the Amazon Q developer, which does the exact same thing. You can connect with MCP servers like Playwright or database servers and things. So now I'm going to try out some project and see what I can do. So if I'm going to say here at, uh, oh, look at that. So if I just hit at P, uh, so it's going to show me all the path. Is that what it's saying? Path slash, uh, I don't see that coming through though. At path, it's quite slower to be honest. And I couldn't able to type anything in here. 
uh, and uh, let's say selenium. What what exactly is this doing really? Uh, let me go to the documentation. I don't really understand what is it doing. So once the CLI is running, you can start interacting with Gemini in your shell. So we can go to the we can create a new project. Uh, we can create a new directory in here, and then we can hit Gemini, and then we can ask things over here. And we can also clone the repositories and do things. Okay. So looks like this is not going to happen. Uh, let me let me clone a repository and see how that works. So I'll just say git uh, execute automation, and I'm going to go to any of the repository. Uh, let's say Selenium Docker Grid. Clone this repository. So I'm going to go copy that. Oh, it's reading something there. You can look at that because I just hit uh, add path slash Selenium. It's just reading all the a project which has got selenium in it. So I'm just going to leave that guy as it is over here. Ah, look at that. I just did control C many times and it just came out. I'm going to run this again just to see uh, how things work, which is pretty cool. Let me hit escape. Uh, all right. So now I'm going to do a git clone of this particular repository. So let's see if the git cloning is going to work. Oh, yeah. So it says that uh, do you want to allow this uh, allow always with git? So it's cloning the repository for me right now. Okay, I have cloned the repository. Uh, and okay, so what are the files in there? Let's see if it can really get the can context and then answers the question for me. Uh, it says, I apologize, I need to provide an uh, absolute path. Okay, I'm going to say uh, always allow. There we go. So it has read the document right now. And it says that it looks like there are repository containing the following files, blah, blah, blah. Amazing. So what test does this repository does? So if I'm going to ask these kind of questions, it's definitely going to work because this is very, very straightforward question. So I don't think uh, this is not going to work or anything like that. So it's just going to work for us, which is great. But let's try to ask some question to refactor some of the code which we already have. So we will just need to see what exactly this is going to do during the time uh, and how this is going to behave during the time. So let's just wait. Oh yeah, there we go. It says that successfully read the uh, car, the content over here. So it has got two files, which is great. Uh, it's going to be doing these operations. So it's a page object model code, which is amazing. Uh, can you try to uh, improve uh, the code? Or maybe we can just going to say, can you try to add a similar kind of uh, code with playwright for me so if i do that obviously this code is going to be written because this is gemini and it knows things and it is going to do things for you but the good thing is you can see that it gets access to our files and things uh, and also uh, it's also doing much much easily within the repos the, the the cli itself which is amazing so I think uh, that's looking good. I'm just going to allow it once. So I see that it's actually changing everything for me there. Uh, it's adding the tests, which is great, uh, which is cool. So I can now ask questions. Can you uh, do a git compare uh, to tell me what's modified uh, in the repo? Because it has now just added two files, uh, I would expect these two files uh, modification is going to be coming in over here. So see that it's going to do that. So it says that the Palmer XML file, there is a dependency added for the playwright. So it's all just pretty much English text, which is amazing. It's also telling us that the playwright tests, uh, there is a new file being created, which is awesome. And you'll also notice that within this particular terminal, we are also getting a message here saying 99% of the context left, which means we have just used only 1% of the context so far. 99% of the context is still left, which is amazing. So we can keep on using this as much as we can. Uh, now, let's say if I wanted to see what is the performance of this entire machine uh, or maybe what are the files being opened and what are the open process which has been opened over here. So if I want to ask this in my Mac operating system, how can I check it? We can ask that over here as well, I guess. So what are the uh, open process uh, running in my Mac right now? Just going to give you a wrong typo as well there. So let's see if it can access that and give me that information. So it's saying investigating the system process. Uh, I'll allow this once. And look at that. It is just giving me all the informations there that these are the process currently running, which is awesome. And then we can also ask, like, what are the uh, open ports 
uh, open ports uh, available and is 8080 uh, is being used by any of the project uh, or process it's gonna take some time there and uh, look at that it's just gonna allow once and you can see that it's gonna show me all the different uh, ports which is currently opened uh, and been used it also says that there is no process listening to the port number 8080, which is amazing. So we can do system process, we can do application system works, and we can also do Git cloning. We can also do Docker uh, uh, stuff, see everything from the plain English text. This is pretty much like the warp terminal, which I was talking about. So if I just gonna open the warp terminal over here, this one, as you can see over here, they also have got the version 2.0 right now and also they support multiple agents they have reworked some stuffs over here amazing and this is a wap terminal so this is yet another terminal which just exactly pretty much the same thing like what you are seeing over here but this is a bit more mature than uh, google's cli i guess because you can use multiple different models over here as well so that's it guys this is all about the google terminal and the first uh, look of how it's been used uh, i think it's pretty much exactly the same kind of uh, cli which every company is releasing every other day and i don't see a big huge improvement in here but at least the good thing is that this uh, cli is free to use uh, and we can use like 60 uh, model calls and thousand requests per day and it's going to reset every single day that's amazing so we as a user gets the benefit uh, and we can just use it that's it i think that's about this video it's very short once again thank you so much for watching this video catch you in the next one